aortic dissection explained in detail for all three steps in one video right here coming up next. Let's start first with defining what is dissection. So we know that the aortic wall has three layers. The most inner one is called intima, the middle one is media, and the outermost layer is called adventitia. So imagine we make a cut in the intima layer. What do you think is going to happen? Well, yeah, the blood will rush through this layer and it will start separating the intima from the media layer of the aortic wall. So depending on the direction and the location of this tear, we will end up having either uh, ascending uh, aortic dissection or descending aortic dissection. And uh, we are using the Stanford criteria here to differentiate two types of aortic dissection, type A and type B. Now in type A, the ascending aorta is involved or the arc of the aorta or the thoraco abdominal aorta. Basically, this dissection can um, go all the way to the thoraco abdominal aorta. It's gonna look something like this. So it can involve either this part here or it can involve also the arc of the aorta or it can even uh, extend to the thoraco abdominal aorta. All right, and in type B, in type B here, uh, the aorta that is uh, involved is the descending aorta or the thoracoabdominal aorta, but both these um, uh, types of aortic dissection are situated after the left subclavian artery, so after this branch, okay? So they will be here and they're gonna look like this. So let's see what are the signs and symptoms your patient with uh, aortic dissection will present with. And let's start with chest pain. CP stands for chest pain. So what do you think the chest pain will be? Mild, moderate or severe? Yes, if you're thinking severe, terrible, ripping chest pain, you're exactly right. So if the ascending aorta is involved, the chest pain will be here in the anterior chest, going uh, radiating to the neck. And if the descending aorta is involved, then the pain will be more towards the back and will be radiating between the scapula. All right, now moving on to blood pressure. Yes, the blood pressure will be very high, the patients will be hypertensive. Actually, uh, hypertension is the most common risk factor for aortic dissection in people more than 40 years of age. And in people less than 40 years of age, the most common risk factor is Marfan syndrome, along with uh, connective tissue disorders and cocaine abuse and use. Um, all right, so here also imagine now if the ascend, the proximal ascending aorta is involved. What do you think, uh, what kind of murmur are you gonna hear there? Okay, so I'm gonna tell you what kind of murmur you're gonna, you're gonna hear and you're gonna tell me which valve is involved. So if I tell you that the murmur is, okay, so what I'm drawing here, this is S1, S2, S1 again, between S1 and S2 is systole and between S2 and S1 is diastole, right? So if I told you uh, diastolic decrescendo murmur, heard best at the lower left sternal border when the patient is sitting up and leaning forward during expiration. What are you thinking of immediately? This has to be on the tip of your fingers. Yes, aortic regurgitation. Yes, by the way, we have a beautiful video on heart murmurs that's coming up. And uh, once you watch it, I'm sure that you're gonna love it and oh, you will remember hard murmurs forever. So stay tuned for this video as well. Now, um, the way I remember here quickly, which are the diastolic murmurs, I have a mnemonic, which is a lot of fun. It's called DARMS. So D and arms, right? So diastolic murmurs are aortic regurgitation and mitral stenosis. Maybe this can be useful for you too. All right, so moving on again, if the most proximal um, uh, ascending aorta is involved, you can end up with pericardial tamponade, right? right? The blood will spill out in the pericardial sac. 
and uh, here remember the back striat that you're gonna see which include let's say the three things out loud together high potential distant heart sounds and JVD perfect more on the pericardial tamponade on our pericardial disease video and uh, of course if the aortic arc is involved then you're gonna see some sort of neurological symptoms like stroke symptoms right because in the uh, in the arc of the aorta you have the branches uh, of the aorta that um, supply your head and brain with blood right okay and uh, last but not least actually very important to know is that you're gonna see here in aortic dissection blood pressure difference in the arms and remember this blood pressure difference must be more than 20 millimeters of mercury At this point we are suspicious that our patient is having aortic dissection how can we confirm our suspicion and how can we diagnose him the best initial test is chest x-ray yes exactly chest x-ray you're gonna see what mediastinal widening if they ask you about the most accurate test the most accurate test is ct with contrast but if your patient is by some reasons allergic to the contrast or he has some sort of contraindications to contrast like CKD basically his kidneys are not working properly then you can do either MRI or transesophageal echocardiography now imagine you have diagnosed your patient if your patient is having type A dissection what do you do? you send him straight to surgery you send him straight to surgery because type A high have high risk of mortality all right so if you diagnose a patient with type B on the other hand you can try to control the uh, symptoms with medications first and if the medications don't work or if this uh, aneurysm is expanding then you can refer him to surgery but what medications can you use here medications to control the blood pressure right because as we said all these patients are hypertensive and this is the probably the reason that uh, they're coming up with our dissection so what do you think uh, which drug uh, would you give this patient first nitroprusside what do you think is it good or no no yes you're exactly right you do not give nitro first and what is the explanation what is the reason well nitro is a vasodilator and being such it will trigger the bar receptor reflex immediately which will lead to sinus tachycardia which is very very bad and it will worsen our dissection so you do not give nitro first you, instead you give them beta blockers first okay and after that after you have given them beta blockers to suppress the bar receptor mechanism then you can give them nitro prusite. but please remember this forget even about the exam imagine a real life situation we all must know drugs we use to treat aortic dissection type b so this concludes our video on aortic dissection i hope you liked it thank you very much for watching i remind you again to subscribe to our channel and to hit the bell button behind it so you can receive notifications once we upload new videos uh, and we have a lot of high yield usmle videos coming up for you so stay tuned for those as well also leave me comments in the section below uh, of what you thought about this video and if you have any questions i'm always here to help and again thank you for watching and see you on the next video